A Gamer's Wish, a game-lit series, Hidden Wishes, Book One, written by Dao Wong, narrated by Patrick Zeller. Chapter 16 Over the next eight days, we continued to fill the requirements of our quest. Using a simple city map, we worked inward from the outer bounds of the city, tackling the more remote places of power. We'd finished just over twenty locations and spotted our teenage stalkers twice more. Since they only watched us from afar, we never took any action. Of course, after the second time we saw them, I reported their presence to Caleb. Unsurprisingly, the mage dismissed their presence as quickly as we had. It might have been arrogant, but if we concerned ourselves with pests like these, we'd never get done. It was when we were walking back to our car from the first power point of the day that we realized pests could be extremely annoying. Alexa growled as she stared at the slashed tires of her car, garbage bags of collected litter swinging in her hands. What the heck? I walked to the windshield and plucked a note that had been left under the wipers. This is your final warning. Leave the dragon nests alone or face the consequences. Dragon nests? I asked, as I handed the note to Alexa. Another term for places of power. Leyline nodes, places of power, dragon nests, same thing. Alexa said as she balled up the paper. She moved to toss it away and then changed her mind almost immediately and stuffed it into her pocket instead. The initiate quickly popped open the trunk and deposited the collected garbage before she made the call to have her car towed away. Next time I see them, I'm so going to teach them a lesson. Agreed, I said. If those kids thought slashing tires was sufficient a deterrent, they really were imagining things. After all, We were being paid five hundred dollars for every place of power we were sealing. Even if we were stuck taking taxis from location to location, we were still significantly better off. Later that evening, I was lying in bed, idly listening to the tap-tap of keyboard keys as I viewed my character sheet. Class, mage, level fifteen, thirteen percent experience. Known spells, light sphere, force spear, force shield, force fingers, alter temperature, Gong, Gust, Heal, Link, Track, Mend, Ward, Glamour, Illusion. Magical Skill Set. Mana Flow, 3 over 10. Mana to Energy Conversion, 2 over 10. Spell Container, 3 over 10. Spatial Location, 3 over 10. Spatial Movement, 2 over 10. Energy Manipulation, 2 over 10. Biological Manipulation, 1 over 10. Matter Manipulation, Zero over ten. Duration, two over ten. As promised, Lily had nerfed my leveling for a bit. I was hoping that I could start leveling at a decent rate soon, but it was not like a video game where everything was run off a series of specific charts. Most of my experience was a rule-of-thumb grant by Lily, much like most of the system. It was instantly frustrating for the munchkin in me that wanted to game the system. However, The constant channeling to the enchanted rods had given me a significant amount of practice, enough so that I had gained a couple of points in mana flow and duration. Even I could tell my body had begun to adjust to the amount of mana I could wield, the headaches in the evening having reduced significantly. Unfortunately, doing the same thing over and over again wasn't helping me develop my spellcasting skills. But that was a different matter. "'Hey, Lily, when am I going to get more matter manipulation spells?' I asked." staring at my greatest weakness. "'When you're ready. You haven't even cast Mend once in the last week,' Lily replied immediately. "'You gotta get your basics right first. "'Oh, come on. I could just get the spell and learn while I cast. "'Maybe, uh, create water, or maybe a mud hole spell.' "'Mud hole?' Lily asked, a laugh in her voice. "'Or whatever you want to call it. A bog spell, something to slow people down,' I clarified. "'Hmm.' Maybe. Lily blew a tendril of hair from her mouth. I still think you need to practice what you know already rather than get more spells. But did you see the quest list recently? Lily continued, ignoring my protest. No, figured we'd be doing this for the next few weeks, so I've not been looking, I replied. Alexa will tell me if there's anything interesting. If she was looking, Lily answered. The aforementioned initiate, having left to report the damage to her car, it left Lily and I alone in the apartment. Might be something interesting. I took the hint and walked over to take a quick look. I paused, sorting through the files for a moment, and looked up, eyebrows drawn downward in concern. More devil rats? 
Yes. Huh. I frowned and pondered the information. After a moment, I pulled out the city map we'd been using and spread it out over the dining room table. I quickly plotted the information on the new rat outbreaks, along with the older rat quests, and stared at the results. Damn. I think I need to talk to Alexa. Talk to me about what? Alexa asked as she stepped through the doorway. Devil rats. That's... interesting, Alexa said after a moment as she stared at the map. Since we only had a single map of the city, we'd previously marked the places of power on it and crossed them out as we went along. Overlaid with the outbreaks of devil rats, you could tell that each outbreak was near a place of power. Not a casual entrance, then. No. Someone's been opening portals, I said, tapping the map. What I don't get is why. To summon a demon, of course, Alexa said. Except we never sensed any of that. I pointed to two of the places of power we had sealed, which were near the latest devil rat infestations. And I'm pretty sure I would have. I sensed that imp well before I entered the restaurant, and he was pretty low-powered. I'm sure summoning something more powerful would have left traces. True, Alexa said. Unless they hit it. Point, I grimaced. What do we do now? I'm not exactly thrilled with the idea of trying to take on something more powerful than an imp, even if we are protected. We do nothing, Alexa said after a moment. She fished her phone out and took a quick photo of the map before furiously texting for a few moments. Done. I've run this up the chain. That easy? I asked. What? You want me to use a courier pigeon? Wasn't what I meant... I said, though sending information like this over the internet, weren't there issues about security? On the other hand, maybe she was using an encrypted app. Were there encrypted apps? Sorry. It's what we do, Henry, Alexa said. Anyway, with the ring sitting around, we have a few higher-level knights who have need for some serious work in the city. Oh, I recalled the people Alexa met with, her continued training in the mornings and nodded. I guessed this made good use of the resources we had. After all, there was little point in someone following after us. What with the wish blocking most attacks? I took one last glance at the map before I turned away to check on Lily's latest progress in her game, secretly glad it wasn't my problem. Thank you, sir, Alexa said, offering a quick peck on the scrapyard owner's cheek before she dropped onto her heels. We won't be long. No worries, miss. I'm just glad you asked. Not like those other students. The scrapyard owner sniffed and spat to the side, always coming in and taking their photos without permission. Thank you again. Alexa waved goodbye and jerked her head toward the inside of the scrapyard. I grunted, following after the blonde. Since Caleb had canceled our morning appointment, this was our fifth place of power today, and even under my sunglasses, the sunlight was stabbing into my eyes. So what did you tell him? I asked curiously. The truth. We'd been given an assignment by your teacher to check out a few locations in the city, Alexa said. And it made that sourpuss let us in? I asked incredulously, recalling how grumpy the owner had been when we drove up. Sometimes all you have to do is ask. All he wanted was us to acknowledge his rights, Alexa replied sunnily. In silence, we got down to the task of locating the center of the place of power. The winding pathways in the sprawling location finally brought us to our target, which had me smiling wryly as I stared at the crusher that was smack dab in the center. Thankfully, it wasn't running this second, but I guessed it made some sense. Countless vehicles and other mementos had been destroyed by that crusher. All the memories, all the raw emotional baggage, destroyed and focused in that crusher again and again. Even if it was a small amount, years of use would have built up. I narrowed my eyes, watching the slow swirl of power around the place of power, as I judged how much effort would be required. After a time, I slowly nodded to myself and walked forward. From the corner of my eye, I noted Alexa had started to browse the stacks, bored. Ten minutes later, I wiped my hand across my face, knocking my sunglasses aside slightly. I readjusted them as soon as I looked up to call to my partner. Hey, I'm done with the first part. Can you... Alexa? I frowned, staring around me. After a moment, I shrugged my shoulders and found a comfortable seat out of the sun to rest my eyes, figuring the blonde would find me when she was done. I fished out a pair of painkillers and dry-swallowed the gel pills down, cursing Alexa quietly for taking the water with her. 
After that, I closed my eyes to rest while I waited for the medicine to kick in. Probably shouldn't have pushed for five today, I muttered to myself eventually. The soft crunch of bare earth had me half open my eyes and look up as I began to berate the woman. You know, for a... What are you... Night-night, the thin teenager said, a wide grin on his face as he swung the crowbar at my head and interrupted me. I twisted aside too late, the blow landing on top of my head and sending pain exploding through it. Even as I cried out in anguish, a second hit arrived and sent me into a peaceful darkness. Chapter 17 You need to check on him. This isn't the movies. He could be dying over there. Alexa's voice came to me as I woke, an unusual thread of concern running through her voice. I groaned as conscious thought returned, along with a splitting pain through my skull and a slight case of wooziness. As I opened my mouth, I felt a slight tug on my scalp, then the cracking of dried blood along with a fresh stab of pain. See, he's awake. He's fine, a familiar voice said. Anyway, you soups are all protected, right? Have some healing factor working for you? That's not true at all. And not if you hit him in the head, especially not twice. What were you thinking? Alexa snarled. I thought he'd just, you know, fall unconscious, muttered another voice. I recalled this voice, and a flash of anger helped clear some of the williness from my brain. As I shifted, I found I could barely move, my arms, legs, and body tied to a chair. With effort, I cracked my eyes open and regretted the move immediately as ice picks were driven into my head. My eyes watered and I whimpered as my eyes reflexively shut once more. Shit, I think he's got a concussion, Alexa said. Henry, don't fall asleep again. Do you hear me? Don't fall asleep. You might die. Not true, actually, a third nasally voice said. Most recent recommendations are for an individual to sleep through minor concussions to increase healing speed. What part of cracking his skull is minor? Alexa said testily, her voice rising. If you check my bag, the blue water bottle is a healing potion. If you feed it to him, he'll get better. Ooh, let's feed the wizard a potion that we don't know. How dumb do you think we are, lady? Try some of it yourself first, then, Alexa said. I tried to listen to her conversation further, but the pain in my head pushed against my consciousness, and I faded out. The next thing I knew, someone was dribbling a liquid into my mouth. After spluttering a bit, I eventually swallowed the drink rather than choke to death. You'd think a healing potion would taste good, but mostly it tasted like battery acid. Thankfully, the potion got to work right away as I cleared some of the mushiness in my brain and reduced my pain. Man, I should have drunk some of that. Look at the scalp go. Now let us go. If you don't, Alexa said, her voice rising. Oh God, you're going to threaten us now? I think you're misunderstanding the situation you're in. The leader's voice said, Please, I groaned. Please. Go on, Henry, Alexa said encouragingly. Shut up, I said. Each word uttered was a cudgel to my poor senses. Stunned silence filled the room before laughter and giggles exploded from around me. You? Alexa fell silent. However, Outside of occasional snorts of laughter, our kidnappers and Alexa thankfully complied with my request. No longer assaulted by the noise, I focused on the notifications I saw beneath my eyelids. Henry Chan dealt 29 damage by Wizard Wannabe. Henry Chan dealt 43 damage by Wizard Wannabe. Henry Chan has gained 24 health points due to resting. Henry Chan has gained 25 health points from Minor Healing Potion. Once again, I was grateful for the increased healing rate that resting in the system had granted me. Receiving over half my health pool in damage from blows to the head was probably a guaranteed concussion. Heck, the way my thoughts kept shifting and the throbbing pain probably meant I had one, lessened as it was by the potion. However, if we had been kidnapped, and I'd have to assume we had been, lying down on the job was probably not the best option. I focused, pulling on my mana as I called for my heal spell. It was a struggle. The pain and the fact that my arms were tied didn't help. I chanted the words under my breath and failed as an unexpected throb broke my concentration. Again, I tried and failed. Only on the fourth attempt did I finally get the result I desired. Heel cast, 24% synchronicity. Without the system help, I probably couldn't have called the spell into being at all. 
I groaned slightly as I felt manna quicken the healing process in my body, minor cuts and bruises fixing themselves, even as the wound in my head slowly fixed itself. Oi, what are you doing? The leader of the teenagers asked and followed it with a kick. I grunted, my concentration broken and the spell dissipating. The backlash was painful enough that I faded out for a second. Gupta, I thought you were watching him. Sorry, I was getting a drink, Gupta called. I mentally allocated the voice to the South Asian. Tired of not being able to see, I started the laborious process of opening my eyes. I cracked them open a bit, letting them adjust a bit before I stared around the room. I winced, having to pause when my head spun again, as I moved too fast once more. Not surprisingly, the idiot teenagers were our kidnappers, the leader of the group glaring straight at me. The room we were in was a dull gray and made of concrete, with no external windows, lit by harsh, white fluorescent lamps. You're doing okay, Henry? Alexa asked me, her voice low. I turned my head in the direction of her voice, craning my neck to the side to see the initiate tossed up beside me. What... what happened? I slurred slightly, my throat dry. I heard something around the corner, and when I went to check it out, they led me on a little chase. By the time I got back, they had you. They threatened to kill you if I didn't give up too, Alexa said. You believe them? I said, staring at the three teenagers who had moved away and were arguing in front of us. From what I could pick up, they were fighting over guard duties. Thinking back to their threat, I couldn't believe it. Sure, they had beat me up, but killed me? Whatever the movie said, there was a big difference between punching someone and actually killing them. And those three? No, but I was scared they'd lose their grip and hurt you. Thought I'd have a chance to turn it around later. Alexa continued to whisper. I take it that failed too? They're surprisingly good at tying knots. Alexa grumbled and tugged on the arm restraints again to show me. And they've been keeping a pretty good eye on us. But I'll get us out soon. Great. Then I'm going back to sleep. Wake me when you're ready. I said. Alexa opened her mouth to say something else. But the group broke up and Gupta came back to glare at us. I shut my eyes rather than stare at him, trusting Alexa would come through. In either case, I was of no use to anyone in the condition I was in. Henry, wake up! Wake up! Alexa half whispered, half hissed at me, pulling me from the comfortable darkness of unconsciousness to the painful reality of life. Henry Chan has gained seventeen health points due to resting. Not much of a change, but at least some. I looked over at Alexa when I opened my eyes and then followed her insistent jerking of her head to stare ahead. Gupta had been changed out with Tall and Thin, who was sitting on a seat with a graphic novel in his hands, watching us occasionally. The bare concrete floor had been painted on, and a very ornate, mystical-looking magic circle had been drawn on it. It looked all kinds of mystical, but with the knowledge Lily had inserted in my head, it also looked very overdone. Sure, it'd work, the same way a car in the 1900s ran. Wherever the other two were, I couldn't see them with my limited viewpoint. Is this the part they get around to killing us? I asked Alexa. No one's killing anyone, Tall and Thin said. We're not killers. Yeah, my concussion says otherwise. We healed you, Tall and Thin said. And we're grateful, Ozzy, Alexa butted in. Aren't we, Henry? I stared at Alexa as she jerked her head toward Ozzy and tried to tell me something with her eyes. After a while, I sighed and nodded in agreement. If you aren't about to kill us, what's the plan? Tie us up and make us watch you guys do magic badly? I asked. Oh no, you're quite important to all this. Will, your blood, the teenage leader said from behind us. He walked around our chairs, interrupting the conversation to smirk at us. I really really wanted to hit him now. Shouldn't you say that with a lisp and some fake fangs? I asked. Or are you guys just minions? Neither, the leader growled and kicked my foot. I winced and he glared at me. It's because of you we're forced to do this. If you just listened to our warnings, we could have done this a lot easier. Zack, you're about to start monologuing, Ozzy said, dropping a hand on Zack's shoulder. Of course I am. That's what bad guys do, Zack said and grinned. Yeah, but relax. We've got them tied up. I told you, if they had any real power, they'd have dealt with us already. 
Zack said, glaring at Ozzy until Ozzy pulled his hand back. Zack turned back to us and smiled. All we needed was the barrier to drop a little more, and we'd have been able to successfully finish the summoning. But no, you had to kill our devil rats. And then you had to start sealing all the places of power, too. So now, here we are. You're the idiots summoning the devil rats? I asked. Just as suddenly, pieces started clicking into place. By their very presence, otherworldly beings frayed the edges of our reality. Creatures like the devil rats might do only a little, but get enough of them together and the barriers would drop. These guys didn't have a lot of power, but boosted by a place of power and with a barrier that was lowered, they might actually have been able to summon something. As I looked at Ozzy, the nagging feeling that I'd seen him somewhere before came back along with a memory. The imp. Are you insane? Alexa growled. Don't tell me you're going to summon a demon to torment the bullies who beat you up. Shut up, Zack said, glaring at the blonde. I'll let you know nobody bullied me at school. Maybe not Zack, but I noted how both Ozzy and Gupta shifted at Alexa's words. If you say you're summoning a devil to trade your souls for power, I'm going to save you the trouble. Those trades never work out the way you think they will. I watched. Ozzy and Gupta flinched slightly, and I groaned while Zack just glared at me at first, and then his friends. We got this. I had my dad help me draft the contract. Zack snapped. Your dad? I cried incredulously. What is he, a demon lawyer? Wait, are there demon lawyers? I asked Alexa. There are, but... Alexa paused, shaking her head after a moment. There's no way it's his dad. We'd know him if he was. My dad's the best corporate lawyer in the state, Zack snapped, even as the pair behind him goggled at the byplay between Alexa and me. I told him I needed it for my role-playing group, and he helped draw it up. You got your dad, a human lawyer, to write up a contract to sign with a demon for your role-playing group? I said the words slowly, hoping Zack could hear how dumb it sounded. Then again, self-delusion was big with this kid. Maybe I needed a bullhorn and some flashing lights, too. It'll work. And at worse, we'll just send him right back, Zack said. You two seem a bit saner. You do understand how messed up this is, right? I looked past Zack, fixing my gaze on the pair of teenagers behind him. Zack growled and backhanded me, making my headache explode again and stars dance in my eyes. By the time I recovered, I was gagged. When I craned my neck to the side, I noticed Gupta finishing Alexa's gag, too. That's better. You'll see. You've got a front row seat. Zack reached behind him, pulled out a knife, and showed it to me. As I instinctively flinched backward into my chair, Zack sniggered. Hold him. Ozzy came forward, gripping my left arm tight before Zack dropped the knife to it and cut my arm free. A brief second later, I felt the blade bite into my flesh, followed by the warmth of my blood spilling out. Rather than just leaving a single slice, I felt Zag stab it in again and twist, opening my wound and forcing a muffled scream from my throat. My arm jerked reflexively, and Ozzy had to put his weight on it to keep my arm still as it bled into the iron bucket. You didn't have to do that, Zag, Gupta said, his voice filled with worry. You could really hurt him. Fuck him. He's just another damn wizard. The girl give him another potion to fix him up later anyway, Zack said. Now he knows not to laugh at me. I glared at Zack, making a mental note to kick him in the balls a few times when I was out. Alexa, next to me, had struggled briefly when she'd seen the knife, but now had fallen strangely silent. Praying she was working on getting us out of here, I growled at Zack to keep his attention on me, which just made him smirk. That's enough. Ozzy said finally, breaking the silence that had fallen over the group. Gupta had grown a little pale, having walked away back to their magic circle to study it in detail. Zack continued to smirk at me, watching the blood flow with a little bit too much of a crazy look on his face. Just a little more, Zack crooned to Ozzy. No, that's enough, Ozzy said, and then turned to me, meeting my eyes before he continued. If you promise not to do anything stupid... I'll get the bandages and wrap you. Mm-hmm, I mumbled. Taking this as a scent, Ozzy moved away and came back, relieved to see I hadn't tried anything. In a few seconds, he had rather expertly bandaged my wounds 
and then tied me to the chair behind, using the remaining bandages. Obviously, the kid had taken some classes in first aid. Good, now come on. We can't let this blood get too cold, Zack said as he lugged the pail to the circle. I growled, watching as the group grabbed cups and dipped them into the pail. They took out paintbrushes and went to the circle with my fresh blood. If it hadn't been my blood, I would have screamed at their laughable incompetence. He didn't need that much blood for a spell, or, hell, use in the circle itself. You just needed it during the sacrifice. The purpose was the link, which was as much symbolic as it was physical. Sure, more helped, but the amount they'd grabbed from me was ridiculous. Stop giggling, Zack snapped at me as he looked up and I blinked. I was not giggling. I was not right. That was me. I paused, forcing myself to focus again as I realized what had happened. The blood loss really was getting to me. Or was it the concussion? Maybe a little bit of both, and the fact that I might actually die here. Heal. I needed to heal myself. I focused on that thought, pushing aside everything else, and started my spell. Thankfully, the blood loss seemed less debilitating than the earlier concussion, and the spell kicked off the first time, running through my body and completing the clotting of the wound before it began the process of fixing me. My kidnappers were too focused on their own task now, Gupta content to stand with his back to me while Zack and Ozzy took station at the other points of the triangle in their freshly painted blood circle. I watched as they began the ritual, chanting together from the pieces of paper they held. After a few seconds, I stopped listening and focused on my spell, unable to grasp the ritual. It had little to do with the complexities of the ritual or my lack of knowledge, though I'm sure it had something to do with it, but like the ritual, much of what they chanted was utter rubbish, made up words and extra garbage that did nothing but waste time and power. In either case, I had better things to do with my time, like heal. Careful not to shift too fast or disturb my spell I had cast, Alexa met my eyes when I looked at her, fury radiating from her body as she sat in her chair. A slight movement had me looking down, and that was when I noticed her hand shifting, back and forth, ever so gently. My eyes widened, and I looked back at the idiot trio, glad to see they were caught up in their ritual. Relieved, I focused on our kidnappers and my spell instead, stoking my concentration with the promise of coming revenge, because what I had seen were the slowly fraying edges of the rope as Alexa cut her way free. Chapter 18 Yularex Jabba, the trio chanted again. This was the third time that had been said, and unlike most of their ritual, those three words made my spine tighten and goosebumps appear on my skin. A part of me knew why. The words were the creature's true name. It was the most powerful way to call a demon across the barrier, and also explained why the trio felt they could do it, even with their low level of power. The idiot trio must have had heaven-defying luck to have gotten the true name of a demon. Of course, they were also idiots. The true name of a demon wasn't something you just let others know. It was one of those closely guarded secrets of mages the world over, and the trio had decided to chant it while the initiate and myself were in the same room. Before I could roll my eyes yet again, the voices of our kidnappers rose in unison, indicating the end of the ritual. I glanced at the notification in the corner of my vision, my lips twisting around the gag. Henry Xian has gained nine health points from heal. Not enough time. Damn it. I had no choice now, as, with the ritual over, the acrid smell of sulfur filled the room and flowed from the circle. Within moments, a demon had appeared. Surprisingly, it stood only five feet tall, its humanoid body covered in light red scales over paler, pinkish skin beneath. In its mouth, a cigar hung, held in place by a whip-thin tail. You call? the demon said. We have summoned you, Ilarix Jaba, to make a deal, Zack intoned immediately. Whoa, you can tone down the theatrics. I'm here already. And you can just call me Ill, Ill said, waving a hand as he turned to survey the trio. He barely spared any of them a glance before his eyes landed on the pair of us, narrowing. We are here, Ill, to offer you a deal, a contract, Zack said, his voice losing some of its confidence. For your souls, right? Ill interrupted, the horned devil shaking his head. 
You three for what? Riches and women? What we require is laid out in the document by your feet, Zack replied, gesturing to the bundle of paper. Ill reached out and tapped the document with his foot. For a second, it glowed, and the entire document burst into flames. Not interested. What? We're offering you... Your souls at the end of your demise, which will be thousands of years from now at best. Not interested, Ill said with a snort. Anyway, the market for ordinary souls like yours crashed twenty years ago and hasn't recovered. Too many damn collateralized soul obligations that weren't properly insured. But, Zack looked lost, and I snorted through my gag. I glanced at Alexa, who sat in her chair stiffly, staring at the demon in our midst. Now, for those two, the demon said and grinned. Those two? Zack asked, turning to stare at us. I, we, come now. They are obviously your backup plan, and it's not your soul, Il said, leering at Zack. Zack, we can't, Gupta said glancing down at the burned papers, and then us. This isn't what we agreed to. Zack stood stock still, not answering his friend. Ozzy stared at Zack, an unreadable expression on his face, while the demon murmured softly, Women, wealth, what else do you desire? For those two. A tearing of cloth was heard from beside me, so soft I would never have heard it if I hadn't been waiting for that sound for minutes already. I noticed a quick motion, and then suddenly I felt the cold press of iron against my arm. I turned my head to see Alexa sawing at my bindings. Yeah, definitely time to go. I can't, Zack said, his mouth moving, and then he straightened his back. No, fuck that, Ozzy snarled suddenly. I need that money for my mom. You have a deal, Ill. Then bring them to me, Ill said, grinning as he pointed to us. Before our prey flees. My hand free, I raised it and conjured a weak force spear. I held it aloft, letting them see the swirling power, an unspoken threat. I saw Ozzy hesitate while Gupta was shouting a denial at Ill, and Zack was trying to talk sense to Ozzy. Free me, then, and I'll collect them myself, Ill said to Ozzy. Free me, and our deal is complete. My word on it. You can't, Oz, Zack said, struck by a thought. Zack spun to stare at Ill and started speaking some gibberish again. Zack, stop it. Don't you dare banish him. Don't. I'm telling you. Ozzy snarled and then looked at Ill, nodding firmly. Done. My feet were free, and Alexa was working on the last binding on my left hand. I hadn't dared toss my spear. I didn't know if injuring Ozzy would break the spell even further. However, when I'd heard him speak, I tossed it forward. Unfortunately, my force spear had a dozen feet to cross and his foot only one. Ozzy's foot rubbed against the circle, smearing dried blood across the ground. Thank you, Ill said to Ozzy, as the demon strolled out of the broken circle, smirking openly and doing nothing to stop my force spear. The force spear picked Ozzy up and threw him backward, his body flung aside like a rag doll as my spell collapsed. I had purposely blunted the spear when I'd cast it, not willing to kill just yet. Now let's finish this, Ill said as he strolled forward. I stood quickly, tearing the last of the makeshift bandage restraint off the chair and wincing in pain. Alexa turned and stepped in front of me and to the side, crouching low with her tiny dagger held out in front of her. Go, Henry! Alexa snapped, after she pulled the gag from her mouth. Mm, got this, I said once I managed to extract the gag. Really? Ill laughed derisively as he neared us. Behind him, I could see Gupta next to Ozzy, checking him over while Zack stood, frozen in place. While Alexa suddenly stepped forward into a lunge, Ill casually moved to block the attack. Both of them suddenly just stood there, staring at each other in shock. Told you Lily has this, I said, staring at the information that had just popped up. Error. Your party member, Alexa, has attempted to engage in an out-of-level encounter. What magic is this? Ill snarled. The demon moved swiftly, 
trying to grab Alexa by the neck, and was once again stopped an inch away from touching her. "'You are not this powerful, wizard.' "'Not me,' I said, slowly standing and smiling tightly at the demon. Behind him I could see Zack's shocked face. "'Just a friend. Now, I think it's time for you to go home, no?' Rather than just reply to me, I saw ill focus. His light red skin deepened in color as his hand tightened and the smell of sulfur intensified. Strain as he would, Ill progressed no further in his attempts to injure Alexa. In turn, Alexa dropped her hand and focused on Zack and the others. Gupta had finally managed to get Ozzy up and was attempting to skedaddle. Fine, Ill said finally as he stepped away. You win this time, wizard. But I will not be returning empty-handed. As soon as he said that, Ill sauntered toward Ozzy and Gupta. Henry, Alexa said, her eyes darting between the demon, the trio, and myself. Conflict raged on her face, torn between her duty to safeguard me and her duty to protect others. Oh, hell, I said. Pun intended. My mind whirled while I tried to figure out what we could do. I looked again at Ill's information. Ilarix Jabba, demon, level 40. HP... Unknown. Not a powerful demon at all. But he was still more than double my level. Even if we somehow blocked him from grabbing the three, Ill would just leave and find someone else to drag back. While this was a poor summoning, Ill still had more than sufficient strength to do some real damage before he finally lost his corporeal form. Stall him, I murmured to Alexa as I hurried to Zack. Ill cast a look at me, his lips twisting slightly in amusement, but made no move to stop me. Alexa dashed forward, putting herself between Ill and his prey. "'How long would it take to banish him?' I asked Zack, eyeing the pair of pages he still held in his hand. "'A few minutes, maybe?' Zack replied, his voice trembling with fear. "'But he has to be in the circle.' I swore silently, knowing Zack was correct. Even broken, the circle still had the power to banish the demon. Outside of it, it would require significantly more strength. Perhaps I could banish him with the ritual myself.' but I couldn't be sure. The banishment might only work for those whom had initially participated in the summoning. At the moment, the demon was glaring at Alexa, who was using her body to block him from moving closer to the pair. Her eyes narrowed as she tried to outguess the demon's intentions. It was a losing proposition, though, the demon being faster than my friend. Get ready, then. I stepped into the circle myself, conjured a force bolt, and then cooled the air within it. Once it was sufficiently cold, I lobbed it at Ill. Immediately the force bolt dissipated as it hit the unseen barrier around the demon, only the traces of chilled air remaining. Still, it was sufficient to grab the demon's attention. Error, you are attempting to engage an out-of-level encounter. You attack me? Ill said, eyebrowless brows drawing down as he stared at me, puzzled. In answer, I formed another plain force bolt and tossed it at the demon. When he saw the attack dissipate, the demon laughed. It looks like your protection extends to me as well. Error, you are attempting to engage in an out-of-level encounter. It does, I agreed, as I formed another force bolt and tossed it. Ill stared at me, obviously curious about what I thought I was doing. He wasn't the only one, as Alexa frowned at me. Error, you are attempting to engage in an out-of-level encounter. Stop this. If you keep this up, you'll lose your protection. Finally, I formed another force bolt and lobbed it at Ill, who had turned around to deal with the two teenagers attempting to sneak away. This force bolt glowed as it passed through the barrier before it smashed into the demon's back, throwing him forward from the unexpected force. Force bolt does four damage to Ill. Out-of-level encounter limitation removed. You better know what you're doing, Henry. Thanks, Lily, I whispered as the information scrolled through. Ill spun around, red eyes glowing with fury, and crossed the room to grab hold of me. His hand closed around my throat and stopped, but this time it was due to my force shield. I just hoped Zack did his job. You humans are so predictable. I could tell you were one of those idiotic heroes the moment I saw the pair of you, Ill said his hand beginning to squeeze. I grunted, feeling the force shield begin to strain even as Ill took his time cracking it. Did you think you could outbeat me, wizard? I can see your strength. Fuck you, I snarled, even as my headache intensified. 
I felt something cut loose. A sharp pain and a light warmth ran down my lips as a nosebleed sprang. Pathetic, Ill said as he clenched tighter. My force shield shattered, the backlash making me reel. Before his hand could close on my throat, Ill screamed as Alexa drove her knife into his back, the knife cutting through his body like butter. Ill snarled and slapped Alexa in the face, knocking her down. As she reached down to pluck out the smoking, blessed knife that had been left in his body, I raised my hand to cast another spell. Gong cast, 84% synchronicity. The spell was focused, channeled around the demon's head. It was so loud that even a few feet away from him, my ears hurt. As for the demon? Gong does seven points of damage to Ill. Stunned debuff added, deaf debuff added. Right. That should make it impossible for the demon to hear Zack at work. Ill turned his attention back to me and jabbed a hand outward, reaching for my heart. I stepped back quickly, dodging the grasping hand as I chanted my next spell. A moment later, a light ball burst to life in front of Ill's eyes, blinding him and me. The moment it did, I let my feet collapse under me, pulling my heels off the ground and letting gravity take over. Not a moment too soon, as the blinded demon's hand clawed the air where my chest had been a second ago. Scrambling on all fours, I moved around the circle that had begun to glow. I jabbed my injured arm down toward the broken spot, my fresh blood reforming the circle with added strength and boosting the banishment spell as I forced my own strength into the circle. I flexed that mystical muscle that controlled my mana flow, pushing more mana into the circle with all my might while attempting to stay in control. My head throbbed further, black spots dancing in my eyes. As I began to consider what to do next, I felt my foot gripped from behind, lifted off the ground from my foot. I barely escaped knocking my head on the ground as the five-foot demon proceeded to lift me up with one hand. Luckily for me, the demon was too short for what he wanted to do, so he grabbed hold of my opposite thigh. Let go, I snarled as I formed a force spear in my hand. I stabbed it into his body as I swung upward. The force spear dug into his light, scaled flesh, punching inward a bit. Damage notifications flickered across my eyes, but I ignored them. Ill just growled and slapped my hand away. In a second, the force spear dispersed. You are annoying, wizard, Ill said, eyes narrowed as he glared at me through half-blinded eyes. I am going to enjoy hurting you. The demon punctuated his words by plunging his clawed fingers into my torso, fingers closing on my intestines within. I screamed, the spell I had begun to form again dispersing. Before Ill could continue his assault, Alexa, who had crawled over to us, plunged the previously discarded knife into his Achilles tendon and tugged on it, slicing it open. Unable to support himself, the demon collapsed, his fingers still within my body. I was in so much pain, even the addition of the fall and the scrabbling of fingers within my stomach added little to the misery I was in. I couldn't even form a spell, the pain was so great. Henry Sien dealt six damage by falling. Bleeding debuff received negative four HP per minute. Warning, health is critically low. You, the demon snarled its wound already healing, even around the smoking flesh of the blessed knife. It kicked at Alexa, who managed to get her hand up in time to shield her head. The kick caught her low and picked her up, sending her spinning out of the circle through the air, the dull thump of her landing body making me wince. You are really getting on my nerves. This ends now. Yes, it does, Gupta said, as he limped forward and locked hands with Ozzy. Together, the pair made a throwing motion with their hands. A tiny flame floated forward to splash against Ill, who stared at them incredulously. You used fire against me, a demon? Ill said. We distracted you, Ozzy said, and spit to the side. Now, go to hell. What? Ill said, and spun around, finally recalling Zack. The leader of the trio was crouched low, reading the chant. Ill snarled and lunged toward Zack, coming to a stop as the circle held him in. He struck it again and again, the once broken circle beginning to fail again. Head buried in his papers, Zack finally finished the banishment, throwing his hand forward at the end, and a small, black vortex formed in the center of the circle. It pulled Ill backward, tearing apart his corporeal body. No, you humans! Got you. I coughed clutching my stomach as I watched the demon disappear into thin air. For a second more, 
I stared at the space where the monster had been, before I once again fainted. Chapter 19 I've got to stop doing this, I muttered to myself when I woke up again, my last memory of falling unconscious once more. Surprisingly, I didn't hurt, which was an extremely pleasant experience. The fact that I didn't seem to have any recurring side effects from being smacked around so much was amazing. Another surprise was that I wasn't on the concrete floor, but my own bed. As I sat up, I spotted Lily tapping away at her laptops, but could not find any sign of the initiate. She's not here, Lily said to my unasked question. She's still getting reamed for nearly getting you killed. Speaking of that, I frowned, touching my stomach as I vividly recalled my lifeblood flowing from it. Alexa's people got you there before you bled out completely. If Alexa didn't have her training in medicine and her faith-healing ability, Lily said, trailing off meaningfully as her fingers stopped clicking away. I looked to meet her eyes before I was forced to look aside. It was pretty dumb, wasn't it? It was very dumb. But... Lily paused and then shook her head. The next moment, my status screen appeared in front of my eyes without prompting. Class, mage, level 18, 48% experience. Known spells, light sphere, force spear, force shield, force fingers, alter temperature, gong, gust, heal, link, track, mend, ward, glamour, illusion, summon, ice ball, fireball. Magical skill set, mana flow 4 over 10, mana to energy conversion 3 over 10, spell container 3 over 10, spatial location 3 over 10, spatial movement 3 over 10, energy manipulation 3 over 10, biological manipulation 2 over 10, matter manipulation 0 over 10, summoning 0 over 10, duration 4 over 10. Wow. I blinked scanning through the screen for the changes. A couple of levels, a few new spells, more mana flow, control, duration, and biological understanding. You leveled me. You leveled yourself. The numbers are just the reflection of reality. Well, mostly. You pushed yourself and your abilities enough that I could smooth things out a little. Fighting for your life tends to do that, Lily said. I guess watching someone do the summoning isn't enough to learn the basics, huh? I said and my lip twisted wryly. "'Nor will you yet!' Caleb's voice cut into the conversation as he walked into the apartment. I frowned as I watched him put his keys into his pocket as he walked forward. "'That is knowledge that you neither require nor are ready to wield.' "'Caleb,' I said, nodding and greeting to the mage. "'You're back?' "'Yes. I leave for a few days and I find you half dead upon my return.' Caleb said, his voice cold. Are you attempting to break your own promise? Are you this dead set on ensuring none of us gains the ring? Dead set, Lily giggled. It wasn't like that, I protested, ignoring the gin. Though while you're here, what happened to the idiot trio? The idiot trio, as you call them, have been dealt with. The Council has spoken with them, and steps have been taken to ensure they will not be able to repeat their actions. Though I believe they will not attempt another summoning, Caleb said. And Ozzy's mother? I asked, recalling the boy's impetus. Dying from a disease. I forget which one, Caleb answered. And you guys are going to help her? I asked, my eyes narrowing, and Caleb snorted. Again, we are not a charitable organization. As it stands, he is lucky we let him live. Summoning a demon, even a low-level one, is a dangerous act. I growled, shutting my mouth. Still, talking of charitable organizations, I made a note to talk to Alexa about it. You know, this entire incident was interesting, Caleb said as he walked toward me, his eyes slightly unfocused as he read my aura. You risked your life, and Alexa's life, for a group of strangers. That's, well, what heroes did. But I couldn't say that out loud. I'd have died of embarrassment. Yes, moronic in the extreme, 
self-sacrificial, and yet you gave not a single thought to your friend. Alexa, she was about to go ahead and try anyway, I said. And still the gin is not mentioned. One would almost think she was not in danger of being lost for all eternity by your death, Caleb said. I kept my face neutral as he said that, though I found myself shooting a glance at the aforementioned gin. She continued to focus on her gaming, at least. Well, she let me, I said finally. Still, interesting, isn't it? Caleb smiled at me tightly. I expect you back in class tomorrow. After that last pronouncement, the mage walked out of the room, leaving the pair of us staring at each other in silence. In the end, I flopped back down onto my bed with a light groan. Alexa returned later that evening, looking worse for the wear. The normally energetic blonde looked depressed, her energy shattered by the demands of her bosses. Still, she gave me a smile when she noticed me up and about, puttering around the kitchen making a lasagna. Any lasting damage? Alexa asked as she came to stand beside me. None, I told her. Just one second. I added the lasagna to the preheated oven and set the timer before looking at the initiate. Thank you for backing me up. Thank you for letting me act, Alexa said. I know it wasn't an easy choice. Actually, it wasn't that hard, I admitted after a moment. I looked at the blonde, smiling slightly. I couldn't exactly let a demon run loose. Who would? You'd be surprised, Alexa said with a grimace. I almost asked if her people would have preferred it, but restrained myself. Some things were better left alone. You know, I wondered why God would let such a powerful object fall into untrained, untested hands. Now, perhaps I know why. Uh, thanks, I said, looking away. So, garlic bread? Alexa stared at me for a moment before she let the topic go and walked over to the bread box. Yeah, I'll get it ready. I breathed a sigh of relief, watching my partner, my friend, help work on dinner. Later that evening, I lay on the floor, staring at my ceiling as sleep eluded me. I'd gotten into magic because it was cool, because it had been a lifelong dream to cast spells and be a mage. The reality was every bit as cool as I thought it would be, but slinging spells creating wards and killing monsters was just the tip of the iceberg. The supernatural world was both more complex than I could ever have imagined and more mundane. Humans would be humans. Self-interest, greed, and jealousy ruled. We might have had powers beyond the normal, but everyone was still intent on doing what was best for themselves and their groups. Well, most everyone. I'd done quests because it was the best way to make money and level up but I never really thought about why I'd bothered. Why I'd done it. Hell, I'd even started acting like Caleb, laughing and deriding the idiot trio because they couldn't really wield magic like I did. But, in the end, for all their own desires, they'd stepped up and helped thrust the demon back into hell. That was the thing. Power for the sake of power was vanity. The best times I'd had were when my quests actually had a purpose— when I was helping others. Maybe, just maybe, it was time for me to start thinking less like a gamer and more like a person. This has been A Gamer's Wish, a game-lit series, Hidden Wishes, Book One, written by Dao Wong, narrated by Patrick Zeller. Copyright 2018 by Dao Wong. Production copyright 2018 by Dao Wong.